love with Kim Jong-un, and that's an actual quote. But this week, a report from the New York Times suggests the North is still building nukes, even though the White House has declared the threat officially over. John Del Grover, the assistant managing editor of the National Interest and a Young Voices contributor, up late with me on the Five of Fives. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. Okay, so uh, I feel like we bring you in when, we, when we're approaching conflict with North Korea. We're certainly not at that point. But there was this report that came out in the, in the New York Times uh, this week that suggested that there was still a tangible nuclear threat from Nor uh, North Korea. Explain that. Yeah, so uh, essentially the report in the New York Times was based off of um, this research that had been done by SICE. Uh, so the Center for Strategic International Studies. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a very good report. It had satellite imagery, a lot of in-depth analysis. Uh, the problem was the headline. The headline said that this was North Korea's great deception. You know, they used the word deception. And so the problem with that is it sounds like, oh, they're, they're, they're being sneaky and underhanded when they're really not. So uh, as you may have seen, President Trump tweeted saying that he already knew about all of these. The intelligence community is aware. Academics are aware. Um, the pictures that were actually used in this report were from March, so they're very dated, they're old, and while the New York Times was correct to draw attention to the fact that they have all these nuclear sites, that there was a lot more than maybe the average person realized that they have, yeah. uh, it's not exactly new. And the president has said effectively, he tweeted responding and, and used a familiar term, said it was fake news, but, but the White House has also said North Korea is no longer a threat. Is that a accurate to say? Uh, I would say neither of those statements are accurate. I think that the, the headline was certainly misleading. I wouldn't categorize it as fake news. Uh, a little known fact is that uh, most of the time it is editors that choose the headline. So the person who's doing the writing actually doesn't uh, have input on that. Uh, and the second thing is that North Korea, of course, they're a threat. They have nuclear weapons. They are traditionally hostile to us. The good thing is that uh, they're not testing uh, weapons, they're not testing missiles, we're not exchanging threats of fire and fury or anything else. So that is very good, but they are certainly not an ally, they are certainly a security concern. You know, we, we mentioned, and, and that wasn't really to be glib, the president did get up at a, at, a, at a campaign rally in West Virginia and said, we're in love, we wrote beautiful letters back and forth. Obviously a bit of a hyperbole there, but to the president's credit, uh, would you say it's to the president's credit that, again, in the last year, we have not seen uh, nuclear tests. We have not seen mm -hmm. th th that rhetoric going back and forth. That is a that is a very visible, very obvious difference in the relationship between the U.S. and North Korea right now. It is, and that's and that's much better than the place we were before. We want to avoid miscommunication. We want to uh, avoid cycles of escalation. The problem, however, is the question is what happens going forward. Talks have stalled. Allegedly, at some point next year, maybe uh, Trump is going to be meeting with Kim again. Mm -hmm. uh, but can that really reboot anything? Because we have all we have very different priorities. Um, you know, we were under the impression, or at least Trump said, that North Korea agreed to denuclearize when they did not. Uh, right. They didn't say they, there was a, there was sort of some small framework of, mm -hmm. uh, of not an agreement, but just a, a memorandum of understanding. There really is no treaty or anything that would preclude them from building nukes. Well, it, technically under international law and security council resolutions, the entire program is illegal. But, but what I mean is there is no proper framework in place, right? Gotcha. We haven't put something substantial on the table. They haven't put, certainly haven't put something substantial on the table. And that's here to stay. And, and the other concern here is not only how the United States reacts going forward, uh, whether we turn to escalation, but also how we work with our ally South Korea, because there's a huge divergence there. South Korea wants a peace treaty, they want to open up trade, their economy is stalling, they're looking at all this cheap North Korean labor, a lot of different resources. Yeah. Uh, but we want to have complete denuclearization first, then talk about a peace treaty, then talk about sanctions relief, and we're just butting heads over. They, they were, by the way, the North and South Exchange, I believe, peace puppies uh, something last week, uh, or, or they, they were talking about peace puppies. Before we go, very quickly, should people here, a normal person watching the show, should they be concerned about North Korea right now? Uh, I would say they should be less concerned uh, than where we were a year ago, but I, wouldn't, I would say to you, do not expect Kim to give up his nukes, do not expect him to be this sudden paragon of goodwill. Uh, you know, trust in deterrence, we can deter them, but don't expect a miracle here. John Dale Grover, always good to see you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Back after this in the final five.